In this video, we will be looking at pollution prevention in practice and how to reduce the risks from the storage and handling of materials that could cause contamination of land or water. Oils, solvents, chemicals, powders, detergents, soil from excavations and even apparently harmless substances such as cooling waters, beer or milk can become pollutants if they enter water courses. Many people are under the impression that all drains run to the sewage works, but this isn't the case. There are basically two types of drain. Surface water drains for rainwater runoff and foul water drains for sewage and process effluent. Above ground, it's not easy or even possible to tell the difference. So let's take a look under the surface of a typical site with a toilet block and an industrial process of some kind as an example. By stripping away the ground, we get a clearer picture of the drainage network. Contaminated waters and liquid wastes produced by commercial or industrial processes are known as trade effluents. Even small volumes of liquid waste, such as compressor and air conditioning condensates, buckets of cleaning water or concrete washout water, are classed as trade effluents. This means some production facilities have to operate their own on-site effluent treatment plant. This might involve chemically neutralising high-strength effluents, removing fats and oils, or filtering and settling out solids. So it's essential to know where the drains run to on your site, what runs down them, and how to protect them. Drain grates and covers should be colour coded. Blue is commonly used for surface water and red for foul. Check all packaging, tanks, pipes, valves and joints for leaks rust holes or damage. Care should be taken when moving and handling materials to prevent damage that could lead to leaks or spills. Don't roll drums as this can cause the seams to distort and dropping containers can result in splits and punctures. Materials should be stored within a secondary containment often called a bund. This is an enclosure designed to prevent the escape of liquid if the primary tank or drum is punctured until a repair can be made. They come in many shapes and sizes. Buns may be several feet high, or in this case set below ground level, or they may be mobile. But they are all designed to retain more than the whole of the drum or tank contents if there's a leak. Filling points and hoses should all be contained and replaced within the bund. If you need to wash down vehicles and equipment, this should be done in a contained area that's isolated from the surface water system. Effluent from vehicle washing can include mud, brake dust, oils and greases. Any of these could cause pollution. Wash waters should only drain to the foul sewer. Detergents from vehicle washing should be kept out of what are known as separators. Separators, also called interceptors, are often placed in drains that could be at risk from the runoff of oils such as car parks and refuelling areas. Designs vary, but most systems protect the drainage by trapping oil and silt in isolated chambers. As the water flows through the separator, Oils and fuel float to the top and heavier materials like sand and sludge settle to the bottom. The separated water flows between the chambers, leaving the trapped pollutants behind. But what if the worst should happen and there is an accidental spill? Do you have spill kits? If you do, are they located near at hand? And do you know how to use them? Spill kits 
are designed to reduce leakage and provide temporary containment until the spill can be properly dealt with. So make sure there is always a spill kit at hand where you might need it, including on mobile plant along with the appropriate PPE.